188th Congress, and House Republicans now are on the verge of becoming a total clown show if they're not careful. But despite the cheering and the elation from Democrats and the mob and the media, it's not a dire situation yet. Now, here's where we are. At this hour, a contentious battle for Speaker is underway. After falling short of the 218 votes needed, leader Kevin McCarthy is now in the political fight of his career as a small but seemingly determined group of lawmakers now stand in the way. Many of them are pushing for Congressman Jim Jordan to be the next Speaker of the House, but Jim Jordan is already supporting Kevin McCarthy. Take a look. For what purpose does the gentleman from Ohio seek recognition? I rise to nominate Kevin McCarthy for Speaker of the House. To my friends here on this side of the aisle, I would just say this. The differences we may have, the differences between Joyce and Jordan or Biggs and Bacon, they pale in comparison to the differences between us and the left, which now unfortunately controls the other party. And I think Kevin McCarthy is the right guy to lead us. I really do, or I wouldn't be standing up here giving this speech. Now, Jim Jordan, he told me personally, he doesn't want to be the Speaker of the House and wouldn't accept it even if drafted. The congressman is one of more than 200-plus people that voted for McCarthy to make him Speaker today, along with Steve Scalise and Jim Comer, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and many others. Now, tonight, I'm putting aside my frustration, but for those of you still worried about supporting McCarthy, I want you to consider this tonight. Sometimes you have to think through politics. Now, McCarthy has already publicly laid out his commitment to America plan. That is exactly the America first MAGA agenda that so many of you I know like. Secondly, McCarthy vowed to investigate the Biden family's financial dealings, and that means a, an investigation into President Joe Biden, not just Hunter. He also will investigate the origins of COVID-19, the disaster of the Afghan withdrawal, the politicized FBI and the weaponization at the Department of Justice. And, of course, they will deal with wide open borders uh, to our south. He is also publicly committed to blocking Biden's radical socialist agenda using every means at his disposal. And to reassure those lawmakers still worried about his commitment, now, this is something worth paying attention to that very few people are talking about. McCarthy has conceded to a very low threshold, what is called a motion to vacate. In other words, only five Republican lawmakers can force a vote at any time to remove McCarthy from the speakership. Many of the people that opposed him today asked for that very thing, and then the bar got raised again and again and again and again, and the bar keeps shifting. This is a very powerful insurance policy. If Kevin doesn't keep his promises, a level of accountability that Nancy Pelosi did not agree to in her latest stint as speaker. And yet, after all the concessions, all the assurances, I continue to ask the holdouts over and over again, okay, what is it you're looking for? What, what would help you better serve your constituents at home? I've asked many of these members for weeks about this, and I rarely got an answer. I mostly got radio silence, a lot of crickets. Now, it is time to get serious with a small majority in the House. It's critically important for Republicans to come together as an important check and balance to the Biden administration and the Democratic Socialist Party. And tonight we ask the question, oh, well, how about this question? What would Ronald Reagan say? What would Ronald Reagan do? Now, as President Reagan famously told his staff, quote, the person that agrees with you 80 percent of the time is a friend and an ally, not a 20 percent traitor. Republicans, they would be wise to heed that advice. As of right now, 19 Republicans, they are determined to block McCarthy, and that means lawmakers cannot be sworn in, committee assignments are delayed, the Republican investigations are stalled, and now this is not a big deal as of today, but... If we lose a day or two, but if this fight goes on and on for day after day, week after week, and the Republican agenda totally stalls out, you can forget about holding Biden accountable pretty much for anything. And the country will be angry and frustrated, and they will feel betrayed. And you can forget about securing the border. You can forget about exposing the bias, the corruption. Is the FBI, are, have they been politicized? Is the DOJ being weaponized? And by the way, you can forget about you know, holding Dr. Fauci's feet to the fire. I think the time has come for that. Even worse, some of the McCarthy holdouts, they are now even reportedly threatening, according to reports, to vote for Democrat Hakeem Jeffries if they don't get their way. 
Needless to say, that would be a massive betrayal to every single person in the country that voted for a Republican as one-party Democratic rule would then continue. At the end of the day, the American people, they voted for governance. They voted for oversight. They voted for checks. They voted for balances. They didn't vote for Republicans to go to D.C. and waste time and bicker among themselves and grandstand uh, and with the right to vacate and the motion to vacate available to them, there is a way to hold Kevin McCarthy accountable if he doesn't keep his promises. But again, despite fantasies from the media mob, I do believe this fight for speaker will be resolved. Republicans ultimately will come together. Work will continue, hopefully, in the near future, hopefully sooner than later. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.